F equals QV cross B is the law that describes how magnetic fields exert forces on free charges. And it certainly has applications, but there's another version of the law that shows up more often in day-to-day -day situations. There's one place that we're always running into moving charges. And that's in current carrying wires. In current carrying wires, you have big collections of moving charges. And so if you subject the wire to some magnetic field, all those moving charges will feel forces that sum up to one big force. And while I won't do the derivation here, the equation we get in the end is that the force on a straight wire with current I and length L is I times L cross B. Note that we're writing L as a vector, and the direction of that vector indicates the direction that current is flowing. And in the event the wire isn't straight or the B field isn't uniform, the law also comes in a differential form. A little differential chunk of force DF comes from a little chunk of wire sitting in a magnetic field. DF equals IDL cross B. An interesting side effect of this law is that since currents make magnetic fields, and also feel forces because of magnetic fields, current carrying wires exert forces on each other. For example, if you have two wires running parallel to each other, carrying currents in the direction indicated, the left wire will make circular field lines. Which point downwards in the vicinity of the other wire. Doing a little right hand rule shows us that the second wire ends up feeling a force to the left, attracting it to the first wire. And working things out in the other direction shows that the first wire feels a force to the right because of the field made by the second wire. Or to sum up, parallel currents attract one another. And if you flip one of the currents relative to the other, the forces become repulsive. Okay, so, if magnetic fields exert forces on wires, that means they might also exert torques on wires. Remember the fundamental definition of torque. d tau is r cross df, where r is the distance between the axis of rotation and the place where the force is being applied. If I have a bunch of current carrying wire sitting in a magnetic field, every little differential piece of that wire is going to be feeling some differential force. And each of those bits of force results in a bit of torque, and we can use integration to add them all up and find the total. Now, d tau is r cross df is a fundamental definition and is always true. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes, there's a shortcut equation that works. If what you have is a current wrapped around in a closed loop, like this one, the fundamental torque equation can be used to derive the following. The net torque on a loop, tau, equals mu cross b, where b is the magnetic field, and mu is what's called the magnetic moment of a loop of wire. Mu is defined as the current times the area vector for that loop. This equation only works if your actual current forms a closed loop. It's not enough that the wire be in a loop shape. So this counts. And this counts. But this doesn't count. The current doesn't go around in a closed loop, so the loop equation isn't guaranteed to work. So, now we know how to use magnetic fields to exert forces and torques on current carrying wires. As it turns out, that ability leads to an awful lot of our modern technology, including but not limited to mundane things like electric motors and more exotic things like railguns.